Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calderness. This episode we're going to be talking about the Gen Con LEs coming up and a few other bits of news. Ladies and gentlemen, this is episode 380. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Over oh, okay. six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not richer nonsense. I'm going to make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, back some more. Let this happen because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that is D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your order. Joining me, like always, in the studio, ladies and gentlemen, is Billion Clicks Bruce. Simeon, how's it? What's up, man? How's it going? I'm not... That's not right, everyone. Favorite. We're just going to roll with it. I'm that SB that can be your hero clicks SD, and SD of course being Sugar Daddy. That's oh gosh, <laughs> goodness! All right, uh, at the start of the show, guys, I want to shout out all our ten dollar and above patrons really quick. So that's going to go out to Grant H, uh, Chant B, Matt R, Hyper Time, Cody, Kevin N, Adam M, Alex M, Chance M, and of course. Lucas VH. So thank you to all our $10 and above patrons for making this show possible. Uh, like always, we're going to start off with what made us happy this week. Simeon, we, we had quite the week. Um, we <laughs> why don't you go ahead, jump into no spoilers, so, of yeah, course. Yeah. But... Um, yeah, man, it's so it's so hard when you create such beautiful art. Um, my it initials is. definitely is SB, if you Ooh. couldn't put that together. but um, We're about to figure out... <laughs> how we can fully inter- internet stock steal Simeon's identity yeah, there you his go. middle name right it does not take much uh my no. yeah my uh whatever questions it's like where did you go to school well there was like one option in the area so <laughs> pretty easy to determine that um True. but no i had a really good weekend um had some bomb uh, Cajun pasta from this place called El Fredo's. So, any listeners out there that have been to El Fredo's or perhaps Gosh. work at El Fredo's, please drop a line. I'll promise it'll be worth your time. Uh, but the Cajun <laughs> pasta was really good. Uh, no, hanging out with Ian. It's weird how. So, <laughs> Ian said that he likes uh, hearing his name get shout out on the podcast, which is is fine. It's great. dang you have more of a um, spot like that. Okay. Yeah. But uh, it's just very strange how close Calder, my own, and like Ian's like humor meshes to the extent where when we're trying to get work done, one sentence can set us off on like a tangential two to like, I don't know, like two minutes to like 20 minute long tirade of just bouncing like terrible jokes back and forth and oh, then yeah. sometimes something sticks and we're like we should do that we should actually do that though that and then we canon. do and then it's like is this art is this high art is this as high as art can go now look is this the pinnacle of hero clicks art it could be to be fair high art was at one point in time a banana duct taped to a wall That's so true. i think what we've created <laughs> Could be comparable in that level of high art, if nothing else. Yes. I think yeah. in the hero clicks realm, uh, s- strictly speaking, uh, because we are the only ones doing silly, ridiculousness kind of stuff. Um, yes, everything we do is high art, and uh, sadly, all of our patrons, I think, at this point, have seen the video. Um, we might make it public at some point. There is like yeah. a. I can I do a little know. bit of editing to it, just to make it a little shorter, and then I think it's yeah A-OK, okay, you know, yeah yeah, yeah. we could we, I I think I'd do like the actual like intro kind of thing that they have, but yeah, that would um, also be cool, yeah. But yeah, we might we might make that video public. It's just a silly, doesn't even matter. You know, Calder's called the Ranch Hand. You know, this is Dial H. You know the things. 
um it's a silly little video and it's fun uh but we did it at 2 a.m and for some reason at 2 a.m things are way funnier than they are at like i don't know (laughs) 7 or 8 a.m the next day and you're like hmm that was definitely pretty funny last night huh yeah (laughs) that's so true woke up and like man that was hilarious in in the moment yeah in the moment and especially the the only behind the scenes videos we have of it i was like gosh i could not (laughs) like we were both losing it (laughs) now i'm just like wow what an idiot (laughs) what is this goodness what have i done um yeah yeah but all this code talk, that's a guys. Lot of, yeah, that's a lot of talk for for non patron members. Uh, for non patron members, uh, this basically all means that there are some awesome Dial H for HeroClix videos coming soon. We technically filmed four videos this last weekend of varying degrees of quality and uh, length. So, yeah. There's there's some awesome channel content. For those of you that like our challenge games, we've got a fun video coming up. Who knows when? Uh, obviously, we still have some other videos we filmed weeks ago that we need to upload. Uh, and those ones should be really fun. So for those of you that like the in-person gameplay, the challenge games, all that stuff, there's going to be a ton coming. Uh, and for those of you that maybe like getting rowdy or like feeling like you got billions, you know, uh, who maybe feel like, Heroclix could use some more extreme type of rules in the game. There's, there's a, there's a, there's a video in the works. Yeah, for that. I won't, I won't say well. too much about it, but there may or may not be a celebrity endorsement in the middle of the video. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite possible. When the, I mean, after hearing this, Let's you will say, be waiting several a, months. For, a cameo for, will happen. For the payoff, but yes, in uh, a way, there, there may or may not be a celebrity dropping in to say hello or help me perhaps who knows something along those lines yes um but is that uh is this what we're going to assume made you happy yeah so long story long (laughs) to say um between like the food and friends and uh the like not so long weekend but uh just it it seems long (laughs) it's 2 a.m and you're like oh Yes, we still yes, have so much left to do, but it's it was so much fun. Um, yeah, that's what made me happy this week. Uh, in addition to that, I guess um, Thursday before I headed down to South Dakota, um, we did an interesting like battle royale kind of format, and that was really fun. Uh, I pulled out like my my what I will call once per year mandatory Devil Dino team. And uh, it was like a draft format, so I wasn't get, like there was no reason that I should have ended up with Devil Dino, but I did, and uh, it was just a very fun, hilarious like kind of moment, like you know, casual clicks at at its best kind of thing, and so that also made me happy. But it didn't make me like almost fall in on the floor because I was laughing so hard, happy. So, yeah, nice, nice. Okay, dude. Well, right on. Uh, yeah, I mean, what made me happy was also just along those exact same lines. Although, uh, I will say, earlier in the week, I was able to go to the South Dakota State Fair, and that was quite an awesome time. Uh, probably the coolest thing, uh, for those of you that may or may not know, I was in 4-H. I was a 4-H for lifer. Uh, a lot of... A lot lifer. They kick you out once you're 18. Um, but anyways... Uh, I was in it since I could be at like nine or eight or whatever. Like my parents made me do 4-H. They made me do specific 4-H stuff every single year. You know, no matter how lazy I felt or how much I hated having to write a stupid 4-H journal at the end of the year, recapping my experience. Like, bro, you do not read this. Do not act like this is making me a better person. Recapping all the dumb projects or animals or whatever I've done throughout the years does not matter. And, and there were parts of it I hated. Um, but a part that I was eternally grateful for was that ever since the first year we started, my mother made us do either a public speech in 4-H or a presentation. So we always did public speaking. Um, so for people that, you know, since I was homeschooled, 
we didn't have uh what, what are they doing like normal school they do like something stupid like debate or they do like um speech class uh, yeah, some speech or like that looks like it actually teeth. looks like you're pulling teeth to do that versus this. I got to talk about what I wanted to talk. Now, I don't really know what they talk about, but I got to talk about what I want to talk about every single year. I normally did things like a demonstration or an illustrated talk because that meant I got to have physical items up there with me on stage uh, that helped me keep where I was going to go with the rest of my uh, with my speech. That way I didn't have to write out a speech or even uh, memorize it because that's that's not how who I am as like a, a speaker, as a talker. So um, I've done a ton of speeches. I've done them on like when I was a kid and really young, I would do them on like Legos or action figures or whatever. Uh, there's even, you know, heaven forbid someone has the video of this, but there is a video of me explaining to the rural cowpokes and folks of 4-H what Heroclix is um, at like age 16 or 17 or whatever. I did that speech. Um, so like that's out there somewhere. Um, and then, but anyway, all this big long tangent is to say at the state fairs where if you did a good speech or whatever, your 4-H project did well in your county, it went to the state fair. And lo and behold, uh, three or four years after I left 4-H, I was still in the 4-H building. Simeon, they they have like ads and they have little things like this is where the public presentations go. This is where whatever is. This is where the speeches are. And they had a banner. It's kind of like one of those little pull-up banners from the floor. One of those weird things. I don't know how to say it. But on that banner was not only the 4-H logo and the thing that says public presentations, but it was a picture of me from my last 4-H speech that I ever did. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is awesome. I was not expecting to see it. I just walk in, and I'm like, oh, that's oh, that's me. That's like me, me. Uh, it was crazy. Uh, it was like, just, just like, wow, I'm famous. Not really. Um, but like, they, they're using me, of all people, for however long they've printed that banner. Because like, it's been four or five years since my last speech. Uh, so they've been using, and that was my last one they have there, uh, they've been using that picture for however long, of whenever they printed that banner thing. So, very cool. I, just, I can't believe I... Too photogenic. I they were like, ah, oh, we I could like so. uh, hire out for some some sort of like, I don't know, 4H model person, but... Uh, <laughs> Oh, look at this pretty boy here. This pretty boy he'll do. <laughs> yeah, I must have missed the part in 4-H where I where I gave them written permission to use my image. Um, but besides that, it was pretty it was pretty sweet. No, I I really did enjoy that. It was quite awesome. Um, went to the dairy booth. Uh, you always go to the dairy booth every year at South Coast State Fair, and you get a stamp for unlimited milk. Um, and then you get the best some of the best chocolate milk I've ever had. You just go back and you fill it up. Um, person I was with got their cup filled up to the brim and then a different employee filled up my cup and it was like there's a good inch from the top and i was like are you serious wow. are you are you like on jaw right now so of course uh, i did the only yeah. possible thing and that was completely down that and then say now let's try that again but fill it to the top this time um hey there did, mr just good yeah looks like my cup is running dry <laughs> exactly so and then you know went on some carnival rides. Uh, it was great. It was sure just, you need some more chalky milk. Please. I'm gonna need some more chalky milk. Have hey, you uh, got any chicken tendies to go with this chalky <laughs> milk? I will no. say, yeah, yeah, chalky yeah. milk is pretty awesome sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. I will say, I did waste a good ten dollars on a foot long corn dog, and I was like, why did I get this? This was stupid. Fair food sucks. This is garbage. Yeah. Why? Why? Of all things, yeah, this is not nutritious. Um, but yeah, no, but my side happy was definitely the uh, state fair. But the main, I mean, the big part was Foshoa, the, uh, all the recording we did. But yeah, no, awesome. Guys and gals, especially, no, I'm not going to say that. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the news. The Wow, ladies and gentlemen, we've we've there it is. Uh, We have uh, 
We have quite the new segment this Literally week. Literally only funny to me and Ian, so... Yeah, only you and Ian, and fine. then after she writes into the show, then we'll see what happens. Uh, anyways, sure. yeah, I doubt I it. I hope she remembered the name of it. Yeah, she'll remember the name. I Now, nah, that'll be a Patreon exclusive. I, I don't want to say this on air. We'll, that, well, we can make that a Patreon exclusive podcast about some Calder-isms that happened this past weekend, which... <laughs> Some I'm not proud of. <laughs> some, not gonna lie. some I don't know if there's any circumstance where a person could be proud of them, but yeah. No. Uh, some anyways, of them were pretty funny though. WizKids went on Twitter to say, uh, so I, I knew WizKids was gonna have a booth at Gen Con for a while. That's cool. So on September seventh, oh wow, almost a week ago. Goodness gracious, they always do this right after we upload a show. You you sons of guns. Uh, they say, attention, here who's players and collectors. They Are you going to Gen Con this weekend? Then stop by the WizKids booth, 309, to pick up your timed ticket to purchase the 2021 convention exclusive Hero Hooks figures. Please note, Hero Hooks Connollys will be sold by timed ticket sale only. So, what is a timed ticket? You'll probably pick up a ticket, you'll ask for what LEs you want, and then you come back on the time that ticket says to purchase it. This basically gets around having huge lines. If right. WizKids' booth is just sort of in the um, uh, what's it, dealer's hall type area, then you don't really want to have a big line. It's not like Origins, where WizKids has their own kind of play area, and then their booth is also there, you know? Like, it also lets them, them like, a space, ton of space stuff out. Yeah. Um, now we know... So, like, rather than, like, you know, the six-foot distance thing that... I have no idea what Gen Con's rules are going to be, but I imagine they'll be yeah. pretty succinct to what most venues have been and so yeah like lines that stretch around like walls and into like go down entire halls just don't work with like a six foot distancing so this makes sense because you yeah. can be like oh shoot i need to really get over there and then you like sprint and you're like ah i'm here in like a minute and like maybe one person's like checking out but it's going to be like you and maybe the next person so it's gonna be like at most yeah. three people i would imagine who knows though so, you should good idea pitch a for tent space and, and sleep right in front of their booth yes yeah <laughs> got a ticket for tomorrow at Pick 7 out. p.m yeah uh anyways what are the convention exclusives that will be buyable well unlike what some people thought they were going to be uh as in the buy it by the case figures that is not the uh I have had a case in this scenario. Uh, I know, bad, I know. Um, <laughs> instead, we get DC Comics, Wonder Woman, and Jumpa. Get that in mind. We got, we got all Jumpa here. Wonder Woman, W, W, and Jumpa. So it's Wonder Woman. Uh, she's got her lasso, and she's just riding a kangaroo. You know, the iconic time Wonder Woman rode a kangaroo. Not a horse. No, no, no. A kangaroo. I have, I have zero clue what issue this is from. Maybe it's cool. I don't know. The, the the kangaroo's got a name. It's this mutant, humongous kangaroo thing. Um, but that is one of the Ellie's. The next is a... Now, this is a two-pack. Kind of like the um, the Hulk gamma radiation two-pack. Yeah, the gamma pack, it's yeah. Cosmic Ghost Rider and Thanos. So, we've seen the Cosmic Ghost Rider sculpt before. We did see the Thanos on the outside of the box in that one picture we saw a while ago. Um, this Thanos looks to have laser eyes uh, and is wearing the Punisher skull t-shirt and like black like tactical pants and like white gloves. So I assume this is from the same world. This is grown up baby Thanos that's chained to Ghost Rider's chest on the bike. And this is like what happens when Thanos grows up. Something, but that's going to be 30 bucks. I forgot to say it, but Wonder Woman is 20 bucks. Um, so that's Ghost Rider and Thanos. And then the other LE is going to be a X-Men animated series. Hey, oh, it's Master Mold. Hey, look at that. So um, this is pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. Master Mold is going to retail here for $100. Uh, right now, Master Mold's probably been going for about 170 between one that and like 140 ish yeah. kind of, I would say, right now. Here's an important um, distinction. We might get into it a little bit more, but here's an important yeah. distinction between what Master Mold is going for and what WizKids is charging. The secondary market should never influence WizKids prices. Well, no. How meta or competitive a figure or a set is should never influence WizKids prices. So it does not make sense for a figure that is a, what, like a 2 by 4 2 by 4 base? 
yeah, two, two by that, four. It, two by four base that comes up to Galactus's knee does not make sense for those to be the exact same prices from WizKids. No. Even in the sense of like them trying to charge more to like try and I don't, the only way that it makes sense for me is that um, some venues still haven't held their event for it. And so they're trying to keep it like kind of like at an exclusive kind of thing for those venues to draw people in. But yeah, but the exclusivity of it, even with that argument, the exclusivity is that it's at Gen Con. Right. You know, anyways, feel free to continue. No, that is. So I'm just going to I'm just going to leave it at that. I think if your argument for it being okay that it's at one hundred dollars is like, well, it's really good. That makes zero sense because WizKids has never been like, ah, ABPI was a really good set for competitive. We better charge three hundred dollars for a case instead of one fifty. Right. Like that was that's not a thing. That's not a thing mm-hmm. that WizKids gets to choose. They do a base thing, and if you look at previous convention exclusives, because Galactus is like the outlier at a hundred dollars. If you look at previous ex- uh, convention exclusives, like Starro, cheaper than this. Well, let's um, just look at. Thanos one that's an X-Men figure that's also like this. the exact same thing, right? So let's just go ahead. Let's look at the Blackbird. That's Blackbird not even, I guess, with Blackbird is cards, somewhat yeah. comparable, right? Because it came with ID cards. This one yeah. comes with Pogs. They are both sort of resources. I think the ID cards are obviously more than just the little cardboard Pogs. But even Blackbird was, what was it, $55? Is that what I Blackbird was? So. I want to say like 45 but like, yeah, 50-something. I don't know. Yeah. It was definitely not 100 it yeah. would not have been nearly as sought after. I mean, it would have been sought after, but it wouldn't have been nearly as uh, used and utilized had it been. I mean, and Blackbird still had its competitiveness. Like, it was still good. You yeah. know, it, if, it, if it wasn't good, it it's it wouldn't be banned in silver, you know? That's, yeah. Or somewhat. So, and, like, uh, even if it was just, like, buying the I, like buying it for the ID cards, um, I think those that. bystanders can be played on their own, right? They've got a point yeah, value. They, so, they've got a point value, so that's so pretty like, cool. That's like I do like that. Spending a hundred dollars for a ten point bystander, uh, but yeah, we'll not get into it too much. But yeah, I mean that's that's basically all the master mold talk we have because there's there's one it's figure. Just, yeah, it's not comparable. That's the most important for Simeon and I, anyways, and and for I would say quite a lot of you. And that's the fact that we are getting WWE, the ultimate warrior, as one of these Gen Con exclusive figures. Guys, I just wanted to sign. Like, sign, sign. Anywhere a sign. Please show me a sign. At WWE Wave 2 or any wrestling figures at all were going to happen. And I know there are people who are like, no, I like my superheroes <laughs> wrestling bad. What's lightning oh. speed? What are ropes? Well, Gosh. if you don't know, you probably don't want Ultimate Warrior. Not going to lie. Exactly. Yeah. Especially so, not for $15. Uh, uh, but By the way, so, yeah. an awesome price. Are you yes. kidding me? For so, WWE figures that retail for $8, right? For one to be a convention exclusive, only to be double the price, that's yeah. awesome. Versus and these other $15 figures. $15 is comparable to, higher. like, that's Robbie yeah. Reed. That's, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Miles and Gwen, yeah. Spider Gwen, yeah. Miles and yeah. Spider Gwen. Things that like you know, single base figures that don't have like a ton of other stuff going on with them. Um, yeah, usually about fifteen. So oh, like normally, not too bad. Um, honestly, like in my opinion, it's a hundred percent worth the price just to have it like clicked. But yeah, absolutely. Besides it being a convention exclusive, I I agree with Calder. I think the biggest thing here is WWE Wave Two is not dead. It's you know it, we're at we were at the two count, and the hand the ref's hand was about to slap the mat again, and all of a sudden Ultimate Warrior's shoulder just popped up out of nowhere, and he That's had right. to call the count off. So like, there's a lot of. Uh, ideas going back and forth like maybe wwe was like keeping whiz kids from releasing stuff maybe it was because of like the sculpts or maybe it was because like the uh, the benched powers or like you know like there's right. a lot of ideas of like why wwe wwe wave 2 wasn't coming out and now we at least know that it's not like 100 percent out of the picture 
It yeah. is still real weird that it hasn't. We haven't gotten any of the dials or any information or anything. But at the same time, we do have a WWE property still being released, still being sold through WizKids, so we know that it's allowed, which is the main thing. Right. Yeah. So now it's just this weird where it might be. I'm gonna assume benefit of the doubt that it is some weird House of X rise and fall the product is somewhere and we can't get it for some reason, you know, because I, I don't know why else they aren't being released. That's, this is my guess. and might be totally unfounded here. Um, it is unfounded. This is pure speculation. Um, like I just, maybe they just don't know where the product is and they just, you know, they did update us about rise and fall, but more people cared about rise and fall. Cause that was like a major set. Cause we were seeing, you know, previews and whatever for it. Um, but I'm okay. I'm okay now. Like, maybe if we don't know where the product is or we don't know if they are allowed to release it or when they can release it, whatever, whatever the problem is, at the very least, we know that they can still make it. They can still, like, sell WWE figures. WWE has not burned the bridge with WizKids. When was, That's was awesome. Ultimate Warrior ever preview? Like, did we ever see the sculpt prior to this? No, we didn't. That's the crazy thing, right? Yeah. So we saw the You Can't we See Me John, John Cena. Cena. Like, yeah, the, the meme um, Cena. Um, but we never saw Warriors, so it's crazy, especially when you think, like, wouldn't WWE want them to release John Cena? Because John Cena just came back to SmackDown and was building hype for Suicide Squad and whatever yeah. else. Like, why not release John Cena, Cena as opposed like to 100%, Warrior? Like, the... Poster, mean, it's poster it's hard to say. Like, he's, basically, for the last 20 say. years, just WWE brand john cena yeah. so if anything is wwe it's like john cena um i do wonder sometimes like you know maybe wwe was like oh like we don't really want you to like release a clear figure we want them to see their face see their big muscles uh to be vince mcmahon for a half second um men with big muscles and face they get all the the they fill the seats um maybe that's like part of the reason why we haven't seen that one maybe but, I mean, we did only get, we got two Marvel things, a DC thing, and an indie property, which, yeah. at this point in time, where we are at in the world, I think is a lot. It's, uh, it's, awesome. it's not a DC it's really exclusive, awesome. it's not a Marvel exclusive, it's, you know, we got we got everything, plus, like, the indie set. Um, so, yeah, just really cool. Yeah. Um, I'm just excited that like it's stuff is moving, gears are working. Uh, some people were saying that Master Mold was going to be like really impossible to get. You know, it was only going to be like the these winnables yeah. or some stores that sold them or like you know those kind of things. But even though it's only a hundred, I mean, even though it is a hundred dollars, and I don't think it's worth a hundred dollars, it is being released in some fashion. I yeah I would love to know the ins and outs as to why something that was clearly didn't take nearly as much sculpting doesn't take nearly as much product like physical product yeah. to make boxes like way smaller all that stuff everything about it like just comparatively to like not even Galactus just to to Starro Starro came with like what four additional figures and the yeah, detail on cool, that yeah. Starro con the Starro con exclusive um, is crazy. And then and Master Mold, what? the dial a... was also good. <laughs> yeah, that's the single dial that it had. No, um, it did have two dials that were. One was okay. Um, well, one saw play at the hundred yeah, point line. Yeah. One saw play. So I'm I'm gonna say it's good because one did see play and people won with it. So right. The other one is the. Uh, What's weird is the other dial I've seen more because it's more casual. It's like the the high damage, close combat, less mind oh, control sure, sure, kind sure, of one. Sure. Um, but no, Starro, for being as detailed and coming with additional stuff that weren't just like cardboard cutouts, less than $100. It's it's strange. I'm not going to like say we need a class action lawsuit. You know, I'm not going to do like oh, that. Gosh. He's but oh, gosh. it is strange, and I would like to know WizKid's reasoning. Uh, we may never know, uh, at least the two of us here on this podcast may never know. I don't know. Somebody who's on the inner circle might know. Um, 
Oh but man, yeah, can we get a not quite ring the inner circle bell? It only yeah. took us to this long before we mentioned the inner circle. Oh boy, that was a, that was like a new Dial H record. We didn't mention the inner circle right away. It, it took us like thirty minutes into the show. Nice. Yeah. And no, um, but yeah, like it is weird that exactly he is that expensive. Minutes. Oh really? Ah, that internal yeah, clock. You're, you're like you're only off by I think it was like twenty some seconds when you said ooh, that. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Uh, all right, sweet man. I'm, I'm giving um, what's his face? Uh, that one kid from the Banana Stand show, Run for His Money. I don't know. I don't remember what it is, but his whole thing arrested is that he had a good internal arrested. Yeah, arrested development. Oh, the um Scott Pilgrim kid who does yes. Any, anyways, Michael um, Sarah. Yeah, him. People have said I'm the Sasquatch version of Michael Sarah, and I take that as a compliment. <laughs> Thank you. I wouldn't. Why would you want to look like Michael Sarah? No, no, not Michael Sarah. The Sasquatch version of Michael. Oh, Sarah. sorry, you're right. Understandable. Yes. It. You're correct. You're right. Snap you're into right. a Slim Jim. Watch what? What? Anyways, um, Sasquatch, not Savage. <laughs> like I don't. Anyways, so we do actually have the front of one of these exclusives card. Thankfully for me, it's the exclusive I care about. It's the Ultimate Warrior. Um, people are really hyped. I think people talk the most about Cosmic Ghost Rider and Thanos. You, you really couldn't pay me to care about those figures, and I'm sorry that if you're hyped and I'm not selling you on the hype, but I'm I am over the moon that we're getting Ultimate Warrior. Like, I might do face paint. I might do face paint at the convention when I pick up my Warriors here. Um, well, he's got a trait. He's got a special speed power. He's got a special damage power. Okay. Signature move, Gorilla Press Slam. Close. If Ultimate Warrior has one action token, make a close attack. This works with anything that is based on close. If he charges, if he uses lightning speed, whatever, it's a close. All right. Make a close attack. After actions, after resolutions, exchange squares with a kit character and give that character an action token. Is this so? It's basically just like I'm in this square, you're in that square, we switch, you get an action token. Pretty simple. Yeah. It's a gorilla um, press slam. So for those yeah. that don't care at all about wrestling what the gorilla press slam is you lift your opponent completely over your head as a gorilla press like you know military press kind of style thing uh you drop your opponent behind your back as you take a step forward they hit the ground so swapping squares with them is mostly yeah. flavor for what this move looks like and less as like a necessarily a good like it's not yeah. like that it's amazing. not bad it's just you we've know, had it's... we've had characters in the past that swap squares i'm just curious this is the first time i've seen the word exchange a while in a while exchange as like a game squares, term yeah. you know <laughs> a little dosi do action there um i just hope ultimate warriors like 20 points so i can run what would that be there's no way he's 20 like points. 15 ultimate warriors. There's no way he's 20 I'll points. give them each an action at some point and do like yeah. a chain reaction so, of swapping squares with a single character, slowly moving them backwards towards my starting area. It's gracious yes. all the way. This, yes. this ultimate warrior conga line, and <laughs> you move, and then you move, and then you move. That's hilarious. The better um, part of him, though, so, not his signature move. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, that's just that's just cool. That's just neat. You know, this it gets better. It gets way better. So he has repeated clotheslines as his special speed power. Lightning speed, period. When Ultimate Warrior uses it and hits once per turn after resolutions, he can use lightning speed at no cost. Uh, let's not get into that whole debacle. This figure was made in 2020, all right? Which is great. Personally, I'm a big fan because that means... Uh, the wording, whatever, who cares? But he's the same skill as the rest of the WWE figures, which is the most important for me. Because it'd be kind of weird when Ultimate Warrior is like towering over Andre the Giant, you know? Um, so yeah, lightning speed, and then he gets to use it again. So what is lightning speed for all of those who have questions? Basically, it is hypersonic speed, but you move, your first move is a locked speed value of three, then you make a close attack, and then your second move is a locked speed value of two. But you do get to ignore characters the whole time, which is pretty sweet. So I like lightning speed. I like using it twice. Yeah, there's I zero dig, no. zero bad version of using yeah. uh, no, not at all an attack power twice. It's, it's like it's flurry, dope. but you get a so like Calder said, you ignore characters. Ooh. It gives you uh, improved movement, ignored characters on those uh, on that power. So when he uses it and hits once per turn after resolutions, so you could like hit two potentially hit two different characters 
or just reposition to hit the same character twice. But either way, it's good. Yeah. And then his special damage power is shake the ropes. You can look up you can look up gifts of the Ultimate Warrior. Just type in Ultimate it's Warrior. This pretty, is what you'll, you'll, you'll see him shake the ropes. It's pretty iconic. Um, he didn't do uh, a lot of good talk, but he did a lot of good shake of ropes. Did a lot of good shaking. Did a lot of good running. Shaking sprinting, and running, this guy. Sprinting, <laughs> sprinting. miles. Yeah. I wish there was a, uh, a gif of just gosh. like an endless sprint towards the ring because. Oh, it's so. Dude, it's so great. <laughs> I think speed maybe value is that why better I, be like fourteen. It oh, uh, dude, you th- is that why his if matches Shawn are Michaels so short? Is faster, I'm because, gonna be mad. That's all. Oh yeah, that would be weird. Uh, it would be great if it was like you know his matches were so short. You think he just blew himself up, get into the ring, <laughs> that sprint. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> that was all his energy. <laughs> that, was, that was everything. Anyways, uh, shake the ropes. His damage power, perplex, but only to target himself once per turn. When Ultimate Warrior uses it, if he's adjacent to two plus ropes. He may use it again. So it's a plus two perplex with a little caveat here. So he can only target himself, pseudo like Macho Man. Um, and if he's next to two or more ropes. So what is a rope? Uh, a rope is a square of hindering terrain, but the edge side. So you can't be, it's, let's say there's two squares of hindering terrain. If your way to be next to two or more ropes is to be in the middle of a square of hindering terrain. You have to be next to the printed edge side. All right. So if you're on the outside and clear terrain, you're next to one square of hindering terrain and then it's stacked where you're not really next to it on the flat side, but you're like adjacent to it. That doesn't work for a rope. So it's hindering, it's block I think is it just hindering blocking and walls? Yes. Hindering blocking um, walls and it the WWE used to be obscuring. Oh, of course the WWE um, ring, the ropes are ropes. But again like um yeah, you can't be next to like a wall and count the adjacent square and then the two diagonal squares. Yeah. As three diagonal, rows. thank it's, you. Not adjacent, yeah, but diagonal. The, yeah, it's the singular like next to like the the straight line. Uh the, yeah. the diagonals Ooh. don't count unless that's the only square that's next to you. Um but like when it, specifically speaking when it's like a wall, walls don't count as like three uh if you're in the middle of a WWE ring the rope doesn't count as three ropes. It counts as it's a not, singular rope. Yeah. Unless well, the you're whole in the point turnbuckle. of two plus ropes is that that's the turnbuckle. You're in the, right. the, cr- the crook of it, which is weird for some of these powers because, like, most of the time when you run off the ropes, you're technically against quote unquote one rope in this weird terminology, right? You're not doing the turnbuckle because there's no there's no way to propel yourself off the turnbuckle. There's no give or tension in the turnbuckle. It's just. It's the static part of the rope, you know. For Macho Man, it makes sense because that's that's where he jumps off. Um, but yes, uh, ropes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's how they work. Uh, technically, does he kind like of just really? How yeah, like magnets. Goodness gracious, back to the magnets. But yeah, we got we got Ultimate Warrior. We had to see the front part of his dial. Wizkid showed that today, about five six hours ago. I know we did all this talk. I know maybe not everybody else is excited for the Ultimate Warrior, but I am. I will be going to Gen Con. Um, I was going anyways. I honestly, like, I knew WizKids was going to have a booth. It, it wasn't the selling point for me, though, because I've been to Gen Con before without WizKids, and I was like, oh, I just want to go to see the cosplay, see some board games, spend ridiculous amounts of money on board games, uh, and that was great because I still, I bought board games in 2019 that I still play to this day because I think they're awesome. So, yeah, Gen Con is just a great time. The cosplay is great. I love seeing it in my Facebook memories. It's just, it's great. So, it's just an extra added bonus that I get some hero clicks to buy there. Yeah. I do want to yeah. add a few final thoughts on Ultimate Warrior. Um, so, the only attack power that is shown at all on his card is Stun. And that's when this character hits one or more characters, a hit character modifies attack and damage minus one into your next turn, which is good. It's not great. It's not It's not a lot, but it's just, you know, minus one is minus one. Yeah. Um, and then also his WizKids number is WP20002, which I feel like is indicative that they're is going to be a released 001. I hope so. Which would most likely be oh. the meme John Cena. Um, yeah. Um, also forgot to mention his keywords. He, of oh, course, yes. has the WWE keyword. 
warrior keyword and the mystical keyword. Um, he was kind of the way he would talk with like the spirit and the warrior gods and like all that stuff. I can I see the more mystical aspect of it. And a warrior might you can't have somebody with named warrior, not the warrior keyword. <laughs> yeah. um, although I will that say I almost be... cried reading regeneration. I was like, man. But yeah, like it's good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. That was his so am I wrong or is his are his defense powers his uh Hall of Fame acceptance speech? I I think yeah. I think it is. Okay, I thought okay. It's been a while since I've like heard it, but yeah. It yeah. Looked familiar for some reason. Um no, so like what what's the quote? Uh welcome to the spider family, Ultimate Warrior. Um Oh, that's true. <laughs> but uh, that's no. true. Before it's true. we move on, you want to guess that just based off these powers with no stats, let's guess his starting stat line and his point value. Okay. So I'll go first because I, I had this idea in my brain and I didn't let you in on it until exactly just now. Oh, man. Um, here we go. So because he's similar to Macho Man, Macho Man is 100 points for his top dial. And so he's similar to Macho Man, but he has to be next to rope. So I think he's going to be cheaper than Macho Man. I also want to factor in the fact that he's a convention exclusive might make him a little bit cheaper. I don't know if that's actually true or not. Uh, But Macho Man has uh, charge, reversal, super senses, and then a special damage with... So he's a 9, 11, 18, 3... And then his special damage is that perplex power. For 100 points, that's Macho Man's starting line. I'm going to say, I think, even though there's not a lot of WWE characters that are point-costed this way, I'm going to say, I think that Ultimate Warrior is going to be like 85 points. He's going to have that okay. fly, or that uh, lightning speed, speed power top dial. With Slam, he'll have... Uh, so he's got invuln. So, oh, maybe he won't be eighty-five. He See, might be. That's what cause... tipped it over to me. Now, to be fair, um, oh. Stone Cold has invulnerability, and he's eighty. That's true. Yeah, but it just, he's got. So it's gonna it's gonna fall a lot on stats as well. Yeah. Um, so I'll stick with I'll stick with my, my original assumption. So I'm gonna say he's gonna have, um, that starting special speed power, starting slam, invulnerability, uh, and then I'm gonna say. That's yeah, that special damage power, which is his his perplex that he can use. Actually, I'm going to say that perplex is his like bottom dial. I feel like that's going to okay. be the the multiple. You don't think he's going to start with that? No, I think that's the double perplex. I think is going to be like starting click four, maybe. And I'm going to guess he's oh, eight man. clicks I mean, deep. He, but he does that when he gets to the ring. Wouldn't it? It would make sense, you know. That's <sighs> top dial, is that... right? Oh, that's shake there. Okay, so it's a speed yeah. power that might be bottom dial. He's, I can see his speed power being bottom dial. I'll okay. be disappointed. Yeah, if it I'll is. say damage I power see is definitely bottom dial. Then he just starts with normal. Oh first yeah, I bet. Click, maybe yeah, because first two clicks. His, his normal lightning speed is called running to the ring. So I yeah. bet he just has normal lightning speed, and then normal he gets lightning his crazy speed. lightning speed later. And then yeah, repeated clotheslines. It's like a finishing like towards the bottom of his dial. Mm-hmm. Um. Stats wise, I'm gonna say again, I want a speed. So because Shawn Michaels speed is a ten, and then he's got sidestep and nimble, which gives him a thirteen speed essentially. Shawn not the fastest WB character though. He is like, okay, he is. Okay, yeah. He is currently, but I'm gonna say Ultimate Warrior needs a fourteen top dial. I don't think he's gonna get a fourteen speed. He's so fast. He sprints to the ring, literally I'll, I'll runs say to the ring. Like he if does. his grand entrance is overshadowed by Shawn Michaels, I might riot. I think that might be grounds for a WWE fan, HeroClix fan crossover Venn diagram class action lawsuit. Oh if gosh, Ultimate Warrior is not grand entrancing as fast as Shawn Michaels. But yeah, that's my guess. Shawn um, Michaels, in lieu of move and attack, gets so nimble. Size. I'll say 14 right, speed ahead, because yeah. he needs that. Uh, I don't think they're going to give anyone in WWE much more than an 11 attack top dial. So I'm going to say 11 because that'll be comparable and I don't want to overshoot. I'll say an 18 defense top dial. 
and then probably just a three damage. Um, okay. Keep in mind they did make this character when he would have been able to perplex his own damage up. So yeah, shoot, that is yeah, like, you know, dang. But I was gonna say, you know, I bet he has a four damage because I mean, he's ultimate warrior. But you're right, they didn't make he was designed when you could perplex damage, and his perplex, unlike Macho Man's, doesn't say you can't target his damage, which means his damage is probably only a three, which is a huge bummer. Um, because making it. A, a you know a six if you had a four damage would be absolutely ridiculous so dang you you are probably right i i will totally agree with the 11 attack 18 defense three damage uh i'm gonna say it's probably gonna be a 10 speed like i'll i'll say max he gets a 12 speed he crosses them half the map mm. you he know? could so yeah he could because you gotta give think, him a 12 speed he, he gets I'll a free because he gets a I can free perplex my speed grand entrance right. so yeah. okay and then he gets to lightning speed so he as long if you're as saying he is 12 you want him to have a 14 he has a 17 square reach so he's attacking the 20th square yeah. first turn as ultimate as warrior as, 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 as long as he can outpace sean michaels but <laughs> is it too much to ask for our first alpha strike in your opponent's starting area wwe figure is that too much to ask i don't think it is you know what no, i think we should I... be able to perplex this 14 speed <laughs> ultimate warrior to a 17 get him across the map lightning speed to square 20 if they were foolish enough to be there and you know man just it's it's about time that's all I mean, lightning speed to square 24 what are you some kind of idiot why are you in that square where else were you, you stupid <laughs> Did yeah. you not count out um, my perplexes you know, and out, my bro. 14 speed oh, ultimate warrior? I'm what not gonna kind lie. of fool are you? When I saw repeated clotheslines, I was like, I want that to be top dial. I wished it wasn't once per turn. I want, I wanted ultimate warrior to be vulture. It wouldn't make a lot of sense. He's never like cleared the ring so much so compared to like uh, Stone Cold or anybody else, you know. So, but I did want, I did want a WWE vulture just to make people have to play him. Uh, so many of these, you know, people that play this game are just like, oh, how dare you be wrestlers? And I'm like, yeah. And now he's meta. So what are you going to do, huh? <laughs> you going to complain? I didn't think so. Um, but yeah, I, I would like him to be some kind of Alpha Strike figure, especially, you know, if you can move up a TK up in there somehow. So he moves up his 10 or 12, oh, whatever, yeah, yeah. TKM, you know, we can, we can do some shenanigans. Mystical. I think Onslaught is mystical. No, he's not. Um, whatever. Anyways, there's shenanigans that can happen here. Mystical's a good keyword. Warrior is actually a pretty stout keyword, too. I'm going to have to play Guy Gardner, Ultimate Warrior, Sky Tyrant, um, Ferdinand, whoever else is a warrior on a team sometime. I, we guys, we talked about the Ultimate Warrior for like 20 minutes. I'm sorry, uh, but it's awesome. It's it's this third third dairy thing it's, that made me happy this week. Um, it's so, yeah, cool for sure. Um, and yeah, had we not had we not put off recording, we wouldn't have known about it. So you guys wouldn't have True. been able to sit through uh, how much we really, really enjoy this. Um, and I'm buying time because I really want to see if let's see. What are you looking for? Uh, Spider Viking, Spider Hammer. I mm -hmm. both have the warrior keywords so we can do a Spider-Man family. And then once we do the Spider-Man family, we can, of course, do Marvella, Mary Jane, Venom. Macho Man. Uh, Macho Man with Celebrity. Yeah, Man, of course, Spider-Man. You know the WWE Marvel canon is just, at this point, Disney, it's time to buy out Vince McMahon. Just make WWE an actual Disney oh. property. Um, Muhammad Ali has the warrior keyword. I'm, ready, I'm uh, super we ready for golden. Ronda <sighs> Rousey to be a Disney princess. It's it's about no, time. Not that, not it's that. Just... Anyone but her. I hate her so much. I <laughs> I haven't had a good. I haven't had grounds to talk about how much I hate Ronda Rousey in a long time. And I'm not going to get into it. But she, man, she's the worst. She sucks, dude. That's you like Ronda Rousey? You. That's why I brought I brought up that specifically so you could air <sighs> your grievance. I'm big. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you letting me vent here, Simi, and I can't. I can't stand her. I just cannot stand her. All right, that, that is, is that the is news. It. News um, though. I I'm going to Gen Con, so guys, wish me luck in acquiring these. I'm going to be getting as much as I can to give away to number one to give it to the local kids here at my venue that 
obviously can't afford to go to Gen Con or take time out of them, you know, going to school to go to Gen Con. So I'm going to be bringing back as much as I can for them, trying to score some for my friends. Uh, I, I'm not planning on going to Gen Con and Shark and Con exclusives like other people may or may not be. Uh, I just want to go and I want to get as many for other people yeah. as I can. People that don't have the opportunity. So like people in our sure. Patreon that don't have the opportunity, I'm going to try to get con at least for them. And then I'll see if I can get extras beyond what I promised people. And then I didn't promise anybody. I'm just saying, look, I'll try. But if I get even more, I would like to do some Patreon giveaways. At the very least, Warrior, Jumpa, and whatever. I, I will not be buying Master Mold. Uh, that thing ain't worth $100. I ain't buying it. Even if people want it, I ain't buying it. I'm sorry. I also don't want to carry it around with me all day. That ain't happening. I will say yeah. um, one last addendum to like the whole Gen Con thing. WizKids on their Twitter uh, release of Ultimate Warrior did say exclusives. So there are going to be exclusives first appearing at Gen Con. Other opportunities may arise. I'm assuming that they're planning on other opportunities and they're saying may arise. Because they can't promise anything. Yeah, or it's hard it. to promise something and then like go yeah. back on it, especially with the kind of people that we have following their Twitter, um, like this guy who says, "If that had dropped this ten years sooner, maybe I could hooked you guys." I don't know what that is, but if you smell toast, you should see your doctor because yeah. that is some word salad. I'm assuming you're gonna say you meant to say if that had dropped ten years ago. Or if this had dropped 10 years ago, maybe I could have hooked you guys. Maybe I, I honestly don't. If that had dropped 10 honest. years sooner, maybe I could have hooked you guys. Could have hooked. Yeah. He's, he's, he's taking another friend of his. So I assume he's like, hey, dude, if man, if only this would have dropped a little while ago, I bet you guys would have totally be uh, playing that's this. That's true. Um, I, w- I would have hooked you guys point. up with this figure. Had but I mean, hey, dude, yeah. it dropped, uh, not Ultimate Warrior, but WWE stuff dropped two years ago. <laughs> you could have tried there. Is it only two? Has uh, it not been three years since WWE? Did it come out in 2018? Uh, I thought it was 2019. Anyways, no, anyways. But yeah. Uh, uh, let me tell you something then, that's crazy. Oh, no, go uh, ahead. So We're the process the for thread. picking up tickets, if you are going to Gen Con and you happen to be listening to this, uh, if you're driving, I mean, hopefully you're listening to this because uh, it's good air filler for your car. Uh, fresh minty scent. Um, WizKids did say that the process to be to pick up these exclusives will go to their booth and you get a ticket. You will then have a schedule when you can get the number. And then tentatively, there will be purchase limits per person and limited stock per day. Um, but again, like we can't guarantee that. So that's just... A th- it depends a lot on like what they bring and how many people actually show up and are interested but uh, yeah, they might. So they might start with like purchase limits the first couple of days, and then the last day when they've got like twelve hundred of each item left, they'll be like, "All right, take whatever you want." But who knows? Uh, last time they did a convention that wasn't Worlds, they sold out on the second day because the first day they let people buy just however much. So we'll see. But yeah. Well, right on. That is going to lead us right into the community section of the show. There are dozens of us. Dozens! If you join our Patreon, you'll be able to join our Discord. And that's where a lot of people send us questions. This is like 90% of the questions we get are from our Discord. Uh, Of course, if you don't want to join our Patreon, you don't have to to send us questions. Because you can send it to us on Twitter or Facebook. Or heck, even leave a YouTube comment. And we'll try to get, you know, if you label it a question for the podcast, we will try to get to it as soon as we can. But uh, another quick plug for the Patreon. If you give us as little as a dollar a month, you get to join Patreon. You get exclusive uh, giveaways. This last month, I gave away uh, quite a lot of super rares. And then I also gave away a Chase Red Skull from ABPI and a Chase Aquaman from Batman the Animated Series. I also gave away a, a Q. It was just the super air queue. It was the non prime, but still, like we're giving away some pretty nice stuff on Patreon. I'm not gonna advertise it uh, super a lot because I don't want you to support our Patreon just for giveaways. I want you to support our Patreon because you genuinely enjoy the show, enjoy our YouTube, enjoy our content, and then you know you enjoy the things and like that. And we have built quite a nice community on Patreon and our Discord. Anyways, these questions. Alex has a question for uh, Simeon and I. Simeon, Wolverine has had a lot of different names and personas in his lifetime. What is your favorite? 
So name or persona for Wolverine. I think this is hard because personally, the fit my favorite is uh, when he goes by like James Howlett. When like um, so like normally that's like when he's kind of like either off the reservation, like not an X Men when he's doing his own thing, or when he has uh, you know one of his one of his uh, many memory loss episode kind of things. Uh, but I think Wolverine, the character, depending, I mean, of course, depending on the writer and stuff, I think Wolverine, the character, would probably pick Logan as, as his name. Uh, that just seems to be the fairly typical thing. So I think, yeah, I think when Wolverine goes by Logan, of course, like the most iconic runs, like Old Man Logan, um, Logan's Run, the fantastic film from, like, 1960s, Logan's Run was, you know... Didn't realize it was Wolverine at first until you read the title, but then you're like, ah, oh, of course that was Wolverine. And then it pairs perfectly with the new Logan, which was a take on the original Logan's run. Calder has no idea what I'm talking about, but anyone who's no, seen I, Logan's no clue. run has, you know, they, they're definitely understanding the, the connection there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Logan. Uh, Logan would be my official answer, but personally, when I'm reading comics, I like when he goes by James Howlett. Uh, I can tell you're a you're you're a Howlett guy. You're that full name fellow. No, could you? <laughs> how how could you? How on earth? How, how, you, how could you have known? Uh, do you have a favorite costume? It's just like names and personas. I don't know what every personas he's had besides um, like Wolverine or Weapon X. But yeah, do you so have like, like a favorite, favorite costume, costume other? would either be uh the, like the X Force like black and gray with like red eye costume. Or um, I can't remember the like she are or like one of the Imperial Guard Puma. Is that the name of like, I don't know. It had like a weird oh, bone no necklace idea. that he took on for like a, a real hot second. That was also a fun costume. But usually yeah, X-Force is like cool and dark and sneaky. My my guess for you is going to be X-Force 2 because you really like the Wolverine and X-23 duo fig. But my secondary guess was going to be like the brown suit since so many people like the brown suit for Wolverine, you know, the brown yellow. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you uh, for letting me know your thoughts. I, and feelings I will on say that. The, I feel the brown really yellow appreciated. is better than the, the yellow blue. I See, think. I like the yellow blue with the uh, black triangles on the side. Yeah. That was my like as a kid. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, I liked drawing. Wolverine was my favorite character to draw because his power was like the easiest to choose. Like he's got freaking claws for hands. Um, so he was like my favorite character to draw, even though he was always just crouching or slashing. Um, but I like the classic blue, yellow, uh, little black triangles on the sides. That was really, really cool. Um, not the classic, classic cat whiskers, <laughs> blue, oh, yellow suit, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the normal blue, yellow suit was pretty great. Um, Alex's yeah. question for me uh Calder, Captain America has a, had a lot of times where he fights for American ideals uh at times when our own government are at odds with them. What's your favorite? Um <laughs> Simeon really got the easier <laughs> like question this week. Um people like to hyper focus on whenever Captain America is like, you know what, American government, I don't agree with that. And then he kind of does his own thing. Um and I think the best version of this you could you could look at nomad we could look at the captain but that's not so much where he is fighting for american ideals when the government is at odds with them i think the the best time is honestly in civil war where he is fighting for our rights as people or superhumans whatever to not have to be registered and put on like a list just for being different and and anybody who is pro Iron Man, please shut up. Don't even don't even speak. No, I mean, you can have a debate with me. That's fine. Well, I thought you were talking um, about when Captain America wrong. was like, you know what, uh, you know what, mutants, I will back you up. Um, I do. Also, agree. that time. That's also another great time when the government before this is like in the eighties or nineties. Oh, did that happen? I just assumed it that did. Captain no, it America did happen. Never did that because no, he's a the, terrible person. Uh, no, the entire <laughs> Avengers backed the x-men when that happened when they wanted them to register mutants they're like you can't do that you can't register a people you know and then obviously the avengers at the time were different than the avengers during civil war but a lot of them were still around obviously um but yeah no that totally happened and that's why they didn't that's why most of them 
either didn't take a side or they didn't side with Iron Man. I know Beast was famously on Captain America's side in Civil War, uh, Wolverine, a few others. Um, but yeah, of course, because registering people is bad, okay? Um, watching them, putting them on surveillance, like I understand the safety, but it's when you put freedom over safety, not to sound like a, a crazy person getting too pl- necessarily political here, but um, I, I prefer freedom over safety and most of the time. And I think that's when Captain America was looking more for American ideals when the government themselves uh, was not. So I would have to say it's Civil War. As lame as an answer, people might not like me just saying Civil War will. Um, I think it's Civil War for sure. Uh, I do like anyway. the uh, Fantastic Four Civil War bit um, where Reed Richards comes up with like an algorithm. And so it's like, no, Tony was like actually correct. Uh, that's why. He, so the whole reason why Reed sided with Tony was not because he believed in like any ideal or anything. It's like he like crunched the numbers and made an algorithm that was like, no, something very bad happens if you don't support the registration, like whatever his computer algorithm oh, thing. And you know what I can say to that, Simeon? Sorry, have you finished your full thought on Reed Richards and Civil War here before? I oh no! If you're if you're gonna let me finish, then I'll say. Um, Man with computer better than man stuck in 1940 technology okay. land. Okay. There we go. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Ed. What thank you. Uh, Reed Richards is, we can say what we want about Hank Pym. Reed Richards is the biggest scumbag in all of comics literally <laughs> no. ever. He is a jagoff in every single oh, iteration okay. ever of Reed Richards. He is a jerk. Ultimate he is blinded. Reed Richards for sure. Uh, yes, uh, and normal Reed Richards as well. He is a complete jag off. Uh, he's a jabroni. You know what? Cannot stand Reed Richards. I think um, Reed really redeems himself when he looks like directly at the reader and breaks the fourth wall and says, "Bazinga!" That that's was probably painful. you know that's that very redeeming of Reed. That kind of like that makes his character do a total to one eighty, and you're like, ah, oh, this guy gets humor. He gets high class humor. Anyways, the next question we have is from Jackson here, Hypertime. Question for Simeon, and he says, podcast boy, I guess. Thanks, bro. Um, <laughs> That's you. I don't know. Podcast That's boy, I guess. Me. Uh, he says, are you going to get a PS5 to play the new Wolverine game oh, coming out my in gosh. like three years? Did you see the trailer for that? That trailer, and Midnight Suns, yes. Um, oh, pff, dude, Midnight Suns looks like absolute trash, bro. It looks like trash. But it's the suits are so cool. Um, that, that's why it looks like trash. It's what? black and gold. Are you, you don't kidding like me? That? It's so dumb. Yeah, it looks like garbage, oh, bro. Wow. wow. And it's apparently like some crap, like some garbage mm. XCOM game where you have a self insert superhero character. Blah, shoot me in the head right now. It's horrible. I'm, did you ever play what was the X Men X Men Legends where you were like a, the new X Man on the squad? I mean, and like you had your choice I mean, of like a couple different powers, but you I mean, were like look the at me rookie. Look at me and my retinas. And you do you think I played an X Men video game? <laughs> okay, I will without a doubt say other not Lego notwithstanding, the best comic adaptation video game other than Superman N sixty four. The best comic adaptation super game was uh, Wolverine's Revenge. Which was like semi based yeah. on the, what was the name of that movie? Semi based on Wolverine Origins. Uh, actually, you no, mean X Men Origins? X Men Origins Wolverine. Yeah, Wolverine's Revenge was uh, X Men Two Wolverine's <laughs> Revenge. Uh, so yeah, it was X Men Origins Wolverine. Um, that was one of like the best comic based games, period. Okay. Because it was just like so, based on a movie, not a comic. Wow. Yeah, Wolverine comes from a comic calder. I don't know if you know this, but... <laughs> so, like, the best part of it was they, like, outdid the movie tenfold with the amount of, like, gore really? that they allowed. Yeah, oh, you could, like, yeah. quite you, literally you me, dismember you me a, and... Uh, a video of this. I do know what you mean. Yeah, yeah the opening <laughs> the opening scene, he quite He's literally, brutal. like, shoves his claws brutal. through a wall into a dude's head that is trying to listen through the wall. It's pretty... It's pretty gory. Um, yeah. The game itself, like graphics wise, isn't amazing or anything. But uh, so no, I am extremely to get back to the question because I don't even know where I got off track. But to get back to the question, 
probably not getting a PS5 unless they become real easy to get real soon. Uh, if it comes out for PC or I can port it somehow, then absolutely yes. Um, but that being said, yeah, I'm I'm not gonna go out and get a PS5 for a singular yeah. exclusive game or even multiple exclusive games. Not gonna lie, if they said that the new Evil Dead game was PS5 exclusive, I would buy a PS5 for that, without a doubt. Um, not for Wolverine or Miles or any of those games, but for Evil Dead, I would. Um, yeah, I'm, I have not bought a PlayStation myself yet. Uh, I've always <laughs> used my brothers, so I doubt I would start now to play a Wolverine game of all of them. Uh, but I'm glad you're excited for it, Simeon, because that's that's you. Yeah. That's more so you. If it was Captain still, America, I would maybe still buy it. a PS3, so yeah. Oh, definitely. Rep up. I'm not rep gonna up. be able Beautiful. to run. PS3 anything. gang, rise up. Uh, then our last listener question is Cody. He says, "What's the most broken custom piece you've either played against?" Played with or played against? For me, it's a two by two called Night of the Living Dead, and I had to try to play against it. It pretty much had protected everything, free regen, and a special defense power that would either reduce all damage to one or on a four three six, damage would be zero. Oh, yikes. Um, I've not played, I played custom scenarios. Obviously, I think a lot of people do. I haven't played against a custom figure. I have played with a custom figure. Um, a friend of mine made uh if you know me uh on a few different platforms my name is nova shotgunner as my username uh he made me this like nova helmet with a shotgun uh it's a two by two uh riding uh i'm not gonna say on the show um and it's pretty cool it's pretty awesome and like the dial is not good for 200 points you know no offense to my friend like it's it's fun like it's a cool figure i let me get the card actually really quick but that is the only custom dialed figure i have or own or whatever it's pretty awesome i do like it i really like the sculpt more than anything um i do have a few the card i'll say the only one i've ever played i've never played a custom dialed figure i have played a custom sculpted figure multiple times um and the most broken one i ever played I used the Grim Reaper's head and scythe, and I attached it to Vulture so that people would know that death was coming when Vulture, the prime Vulture, of course. Um, the like few times that I played him competitively, uh, yeah. So that's the, the most broken one I've ever played. I've actually never... We're, like That's not like a, a thing around here. As, uh, a few people have like thought about it and like mentioned it and i've always been like encouraging i've always been like yeah absolutely just like bring it in and show us the dial and we can all vote like as a group of like four or five or six or whatever we can all vote as like what we think the point value should be and you just take like the average of those and that becomes the point value, and then we allow it to be played um i always thought that'd be like a great idea and i don't know it just doesn't really happen too often to be fair it is kind of hard to one have like a dial that you're willing to destroy and then print out like the the right size and everything like that and then also usually has to have a custom sculpt so it is kind of hard to do that kind of stuff yeah i finally found the card uh i I have no special powers i do start with hypersonic speed invulnerability um i think Blocks, something like like that. Uh, I'm riding a horse. That's what it was. Because uh, I have Earthbound on my last click. Um, we're down a horse, and then I have Blades, Claws, Fangs, and whatnot on that click. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty fun figure. Although while I was looking at my custom cards, I found that I also have another custom card for a figure I made, uh, which is none other than the greatest attorney in all of media, Phoenix Wright. Uh, he's got a detective, attorney, and celebrity keywords. Ah uh, man, man, I was. These are awesome. So he's got running shot. Court is now in session. Stealth is gather evidence. Psy blast is break the opponent's case. So I gave Phoenix Rise 100 points here, by the way. Uh, running shot, pen blast figure. Um, toughness uh, fell 40 feet and lived. That's that's canon. 
Uh, Will Powers will do anything for the innocent. Outwit is called the Ace Attorney. Perplex is called Build a Case, dot, 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 and then Probability Control. Then Win the Unwinnable, which is another, uh, I think that's what um, Maya or Mia, I think Mia said that to Phoenix before she uh, dies. Um, Of course, he has a trait called Objection. The Objection token begins the game attached to Phoenix Wright. At no cost, give Phoenix Wright a power action. No idea what I was thinking with that wording. Uh, at no cost, give him a power action. Maybe uh, it doesn't count toward your action total is, is what at I meant. At no cost. Um, at no cost give to do a power action. a power action. Makes, makes zero <laughs> sense. Um, As a free action, take a power action. <laughs> take a power action. Yeah, it's basically <laughs> what it says. That's pretty good, uh, though. Yeah, yeah. Probably, like, so, uh, yeah, take a power action at no cost, sure. Yeah, something like sense. that. Yeah. Uh, it's the objection token within range and line of fire. Characters in four squares can't use that word or perplex. Be pretty, pretty simple here. A little, little power dampening objection token. But yeah, those are, those are the custom figures. He does have a custom dial. Um, so yeah, I don't know. But yeah, those, those are the custom figures I have. I did make, and I need to, and I've said this before, but I need to go back and make like a thread on hc realms or something with my custom uh team fortress 2 figures because i i was slowly making all of their sculpts and i was gonna actually put dials and like make a full set I, I'll, I'll really have to get back into that when i get the time um but that was fun anyways that is going to answer all of our listener questions for the show guys that's that's all we got for you this week i'm going to go to gen con this week so hopefully i can have some uh, floor, you know, man on the floor, dude in the field type stuff going on here. I really want to talk with a WizKids employee. I really want to have a genuine, real conversation. And if you guys want to send in questions to the show about questions you want me to ask them, now let me prerequisite this really quickly. I will not be asking any, can you make X? Why can't you make X? Questions. Where's adult I'll- green dragon? Yeah, there's not going to be that. There's not going to be, can you make anime clicks? None of that stuff that's just, like, doesn't mean anything. Like, they'll just be like, uh, you know. Ask them questions from a design standpoint that makes sense. You know, things like, how early do you start building or looking at a hero click set? You know, things like, once you know what theme the set is going to be, how do you choose characters? You know, things that are more interesting than so, can you make X? When will you make X? Why hasn't WWE came out yet? Like, shut up, shut up, shut up. Like, those are not questions that are interesting for them to answer. Yeah, we have to think about, like, yes, are those things we want to know? Of course. Um, But we have to think of them as people and lives and whatever and things that I would like to ask them as an interview standpoint. Now, whether or not this will happen, I don't know. But I would like questions that you guys can think of. Uh, for a HeroClix employee, like what goes into making a dial and a card and whatever else, you know, why do they choose some weird issues for significant appearances? Who knows? Like, make them fun. Make them like, why would you choose to give a character a certain mechanic? What makes you, like, how how do you design a figure? How much comic books do you read or look at or whatever? Like, interesting things from a design standpoint that only they could answer, you know? So, like, that's that's my goal for the weekend, you know? obviously get some Connolly's whatever but my, my goal for the weekend is to try to have a, a good conversation with a WizKids employee that knows even if it's just an employee at the booth who's maybe in charge of hero clicks I would still like to have a conversation with them you know WizKids we've sent them emails in the past as you guys know we have not yet uh, been able to do any previews for figures I was really really gunning to get Captain America and the Avengers previews and I don't necessarily want previews out of this. I don't really care if they give us previews or not. I just want to know that we can, I don't know, talk with them. I don't know how to say it. I don't want them to think that we hate them. I don't. Uh, we're critical when we want to be critical and we praise them when they deserve to be praised. I think we're just a very honest podcast in that way. But I just yeah. want there to be some good communication between us and WizKids. And I want them to know that we do the things on our podcast and on our YouTube because we genuinely love and care for this game. And yeah. that is why we do I anything think and everything. You're, if you're one of those that. people, and I don't think there's a ton of people like this out there, but if you're one of those people that like constantly praises WizKids and is like, they can do no harm, they can do no wrong, uh, you're only making everything worse. No, like Being in an echo chamber does not help WizKids. They need feedback. I feel like we keep it fun and fresh. We never like do 
like big takedowns where we're like whiz kids is the worst stop buying from them let's sue them like we don't do stuff like that we keep it light we keep it funny i like to think we do at least uh maybe that's not always true but yeah um i don't know it's just why whiz kids why 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 pain <laughs> yeah. goodness why canny is it because i photoshopped your face onto a dolphin one time is that why he didn't see that though, did he? Didn't no, he that. never saw that. I okay. just didn't get to it, but he never saw it. I can't um, believe you would admit to that. It's not something I would admit to, that's for sure. It, is it going to make our situation worse? No. I mean, I genuinely, I, it, I honestly want to know. Could it prevent it from ever if getting it better? Were, yes. If it's like, because like, here's the thing about whatever, Hero Clicks, you know, or this podcast not to get on this huge dial H lore tangent here, fellas, uh, guys. Well, if you're driving to work, maybe we're helping you get a few more minutes in. But on the original podcast, they would always joke about how, like, ah, the WizKids hates us, blah, 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 whatever. I hope <laughs> WizKids is realized that we are now a different set of people. Um, maybe they do, maybe they don't. I honestly don't know. Maybe they, they don't listen. I, I assume maybe one person listens from there just to keep tabs on all the people. I feel bad for the employee that has to listen to every hero clicks podcast though. Yikes. Anyways. Um, I hope they don't realize, I hope they do realize that we are different people with different goals, uh, and different things still keeping a fun theme of the podcast, but that we are very much open to, uh, just talking, just being like, Hey guys, I genuinely like, love this game you know am i am i hard on you yeah but the pitch meetings are funny the skits are funny the gameplay that simi and i do is like hilarious to watch because you can watch a million hero clicks games on youtube but there's only one hero clicks game where we're eating hot wings and sh- having our brains melted and mouths on fire which are <laughs> running shot <laughs> pen blast you know like it's hilarious it's great like i just i truly want to make content that is awesome and i just want whiz kids to be like you know what calder I kecked. That was funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, to be, for nothing to be honest, like we uh, uh, we are pretty shameless for the sake of this game. And I don't want to toot our own horn or anything, but like I'm willing to be quite embarrassed by my own self, just in hopes that people think that it's interesting enough to continue playing this game. If that's yeah. like the minimum I can contribute, uh, you know. That's if one is. person laughed that like it doesn't matter how many views the video gets if one person laughed perfect job is done love it all right well that's the show guys if you want to see all the crazy videos we mentioned of course please subscribe to our youtube channel a ton of people will look at our youtube channel and view it uh homies ain't subscribed though fellas let's get some subscriptions all up on that youtube is nasty all right we're putting out weekly youtube videos all this gameplay stuff i'm recording for my local venue so if you're tired of seeing 300 modern all the time i've played some 400 golden age last week golden age like with no ban list but it was just martial artist warrior brute like that's pretty awesome so we uh we do all sorts of stuff at my venue you know we got some awesome gameplay videos there we have simi and i are going over some sealed gameplay we do skit videos every once in a while it's fun be a good times and yeah there's unboxings there too but everybody does unboxings i think we do something way cooler way more unique so definitely check out our youtube channel guys if you're interested in in any kind of hero hooks related content at all that is all i have to say on that subject yeah and if you want all that someone has to say on a subject you should check out some of the uh articles on coolstuffing.com and while you're on coolstuffing.com make sure to check out all the cool stuff they have in stock every day including the latest hero clicks singles and sealed products make sure to check them out at coolstuffinc.com happy trails so if you're looking for emotional satisfaction my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks now are you serious Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, good roll. Back some. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Is an alright segue. Simeon, did you try to look up Calderness Heroclix 4A?